In this video, I'm going to review multi-leaders. Multi-leaders are a new version of a leader. A main, the main tool to use in AutoCAD was a quick leader. So you may have heard people talk about those, or perhaps you've used those before. The multi-leader, again, is a newer tool that has some clear advantages over the quick leader. Now, if you're not familiar with a leader at all, what I'm talking about is an arrowhead with a um, note or piece of text attached to it. So you'll see those extremely often in technical drawings to identify objects or materials, uh, especially on like sections and details. Now for this video, I'm going to assume that the text style is already set up as annotative. If you uh, aren't sure what I mean, then I suggest you watch the text video first where I cover how to do that. And then the uh, multi-leader video that you're watching now will make more sense in that regard. So you can go to the annotation section on the home panel of your ribbon and you can see the multi-leader tool there. But again, we need to set up the style first. So I'm gonna click on the word annotation to fly out with the style um, pull downs and, modif and management icons. So the third row here is multi-leader style with a little paintbrush would open the multi-leader style manager. So that's what I'm gonna choose. And then you can see multi-leader style manager. And then I will hit modify to modify the default style. Obviously, you could create a new one if you wanted. I'm going to start on the content tab and choose the text style that you have previously set up. Again, if you needed to do that, you could click on the three dots to the right of the pull down in order to get to the text style manager as a little shortcut there. The text height is grayed out because I have that set up in the text style. If you had the text style set at zero, you could enter your text height here. And then uh, at the very bottom left, where the attachment occurs, I'm going to change right attachment to middle of bottom line. And I'll show you what that means when we start doing the multi-leaders. Now on the leader structure tab, I just need to make sure that my annotative box is checked. Otherwise, these settings are probably pretty good by default. And on the leader format tab, I'm going to change the arrowhead size here to 330 seconds, and that's somewhat for consistency with uh, the dimension arrowheads. And then it's also uh, making it consistent with 330 seconds being used for a lot of these numbers, so it's a little easier to remember. Otherwise, the rest of these settings are probably fine for right now as well. Now I can hit OK, and obviously that's already the current style because there's only one, so I can close. Now before I make any multi-leaders, I need to set my annotation scale. Again, just like when I went over text and dimensions, that will control the size of the text in the multi-leader and the arrowhead. So you need to plan ahead and think about what size you're going to be printing a certain drawing and then set your scale button accordingly. So I'm going to say, let's say I'm doing a wall section. Maybe it's at one inch per foot. And uh, now here's my wall section. Use your imagination a little with me. And now I can make a multi-leader. Multi-leader tool is also there on your annotation panel. So I'll click on that. Now if you follow your command line, you can see it says specify leader arrowhead location. So click at what you want to identify. Now the next click is to drop the what's called the landing, which is the horizontal segment of the leader. So you can click to drop that. And then you immediately are taken to the text editor so I can type in my note. So perhaps I'm calling this out as 8 inch CMU, something like that. Now while you're in the text editor, what I usually suggest is that you take the uh, grip of the ruler and pull it out so that the text has a width. Otherwise the width of the text will be at zero and that kind of defeats the purpose of having multi-line text because if it's a very long note it won't carriage down to the second line, third line, etc. So it's a good idea to take advantage of having the multi-line text which means you have to pull that width out. So now if I have a very long note it'll go down to another line rather than continuing on with a single line forever. And you could theoretically change the settings up here in your text editor uh, ribbon, but it's not really necessary uh, because you, at least the way I have it set up, it's already controlling the height, it's already controlling the style, and uh, the justification is normally dictated by the direction of how you drew the leader. So I'm just going to click out to finish that, and now I have a multi-leader. Just like text, you can double-click if you want to edit it. And then you can also pull the grips. If I want to make this uh, landing a little longer or shorter, I can do that. If I want to make the arrow point at something else, I can do that very easily by manipulating the grips, uh, just like with uh, the old-fashioned quick leaders. 
Now, if you'd use the multi-leader, it can also face it in the other direction. So there's another note. And then again, I need to pull that grip out so that I don't have a zero width. Now, if I do have a longer note, you can see how when I clicked out of the text editor, the leader is attaching to the bottom line of the text. And that is usually preferable for most companies so that the arrow is either touching the beginning of the note if it's justified on the left or the end of the note if it's justified on the right. That's a little subjective, so some companies might prefer that in other ways, but that's how most would probably prefer it. So uh, that's why I changed that setting in the multi-leader style manager about middle of bottom line for right justifi justified leaders. Now the last suggestion is if you do have a, uh, a wall section, for example, and you have many notes, like maybe five or 10 or something like that, you want to make sure they're always stacked in a nice vertical column um, because then it will be easy to read and look professional and clean. And an easy way to do that is to do what I just did, which is copy your, your leader note up a few times. And now I can change what the text says to some other note and uh, pull that grip out if I need it to be wider. And then I can change what the arrowhead uh, points at. So in that way, it's automatically aligned in a nice vertical column. So what you don't want to see is a multi-leader, um, a bunch of multi-leaders doing something like this because it's very sloppy. Now, there are some uh, easy ways to fix this kind of issue. If you have multi-leaders that are not aligned, you can uh, hit the little pull down next to the multi-leader tool and you can see you can add additional leader head, arrowheads, remove some. So that's one advantage over the quick leader as well. And there's also an, an align tool. So if I hit that, I can select which multi-leaders I want to align and then hit enter to move on to the next step and then select which one I'm aligning them with and then I uh, click one more time to kind of draw a vertical line and that will align them into that nice column again. You will probably have to modify the uh, grips a little afterwards but it makes it a lot easier than trying to align them manually. So that's the basics of the multi-leader. Just remember to set that annotation scale first, and uh, if you don't, correcting the issue works the same as what I went over in uh, the text, which means you can adjust the annotation scale in the properties palette, or by right-clicking and going to annotative object scale, and then add slash delete. You can add additional scales or remove inappropriate scales, just like I've gone over in some of my other videos.